Hi designers, welcome to SolidWorks Central. In this tutorial, we'll be creating the master rod for a radial engine step by step. We'll use essential features such as extruded boss base, cut extrude, mirror, combine and fillet. Along the way, I'll share useful tips so you can improve both your modelling speed and accuracy. You can find the technical drawing in the description below so you can follow along and practice on your own. So, let's get started and bring this design to life. First, open a sketch on the top plane to define the initial shape of the master rod. Activate the centerline tool. Draw a horizontal centerline starting from the origin. Use zoom to fit to center your sketch on the screen. Now, switch to the circle tool. From the origin, create two concentric circles. Next, add another pair of circles here. Activate the Smart Dimension tool to apply dimensions. Set the distance between the two circle centers to 250 millimeters. For the smaller circle, set the diameter to 52 millimeters. For the larger circle, set the diameter to 63 millimeters. In the second pair, Set the smaller circle to 24 mm. And finally, set the larger circle to 35 mm. Select the circle tool. Draw two circles. Hold down Ctrl or Shift. Select both circles and make them equal. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set the diameter to 26 mm. Set the vertical distance from this circle's center to the origin to 26 mm. Set the horizontal distance to 40 mm. Set the vertical distance between this circle's center and the other circle's center to 17 mm. Set the horizontal distance from this circle's center to the origin to 15 mm. Select the three-point arc tool. Create an arc between the two circles. Now, select the circle tool. Draw one circle at the center of each main circle. Make the two circles equal in size. Apply a tangent relation between the arc endpoints and the adjacent circles. Now, activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set the arc radius to 72 mm. Set the circle diameter to 10 mm. One section is complete. Let's continue. Open the Mirror Entities command. In the Entities to Mirror box, select the geometry you want to mirror. Keep the Copy option active. For Mirror About, select the center line as the mirror axis. Right-click to confirm the command. Select the Arc tool again. Draw an arc between these two circles Make it equal to the other arcs and apply tangent relations with the nearby circles. This section is now complete. Select the three point arc tool again. Draw the arc so that one end point touches the circle. Select the Line tool, extend a line from the end of the arc toward the other circle. Apply a tangent relation between the arc and the line. Apply a tangent relation between the arc and the circle as well. Make the arc equal to the other arcs so that they share the same radius. Before opening the Mirror Entities command, Select the Entities to Mirror and the Centerline. 
Then click Mirror Entities to complete the mirror automatically. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set the distance between these two points to 18 millimeters. And set the distance between these two points to 26 millimeters. Activate the Trim Entities tool. Keep Power Trim selected. Trim away the extra parts of the circles. The sketch is now complete, with no parts missing in this section. Go to the Features tab and open the Extruded Boss Base command. The Selected Contours option lets you choose specific closed areas of a sketch to extrude. For the first closed contour, start with this section and select it. In the End Condition box, change Blind to Mid-Plane. Set the depth to 72 mm. Click OK to confirm. From the Feature Manager tree, click on the sketch. Then, open the Extruded Boss Base command again. This time, select this closed contour for the extrusion. Keep the end condition set to mid-plane. Set the depth to 42 mm. Keep Merge Result active. Click OK. Click on the sketch once more and open the extruded boss base command again. This time, apply a depth to this closed contour. Keep mid-plane as the end condition. Keep the depth the same as before. Deactivate merge result. We want this to be a separate body and in a moment you'll see why when we use another feature. Click OK to confirm. As you can see, we now have two separate bodies. Open a new sketch on the top plane. Select this face. Click the Convert Entities tool to project the edges of the selected face onto the sketch. Also convert this circle into the sketch. Select the Three Point Arc tool. From the edge of the circle, create an arc to this point. Do the same on this side as well. Select these four extra lines and delete them with the Delete key. Add tangent relations where needed. Use Trim Entities to trim away the extra part of the circle. This part is now complete. Open the Extruded Cut command. Set the end condition to mid-plane. Enter 28 mm as the cut depth. Click OK. Open a sketch on the front plane. Activate the Line tool. Start drawing from the exact center of this circle. When you return to the same point while still in the line command, SolidWorks automatically switches to the Arc tool. This lets you continue with a smooth arc without changing tools. Bring it back to the starting point to finish the sketch. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set the distance between the origin and this point to 87 mm. Set the angle to 2 degrees. Set the arc radius to 78 mm. Activate the Centerline tool. Draw a vertical centerline from here. Activate the Smart Dimension tool again. Set the line length to 12 mm. Set the distance from the line to the circle center as half the circle's diameter. 
17.5 mm. This two degree angle keeps moving around like a naughty child. The sketch is now complete. Earlier, I mentioned we created two separate bodies for a reason. Now we've reached that point, open the extruded cut command. For better visibility, switch the view orientation to top view. Set the cut depth just enough to pass through the part. When I apply the cut, this section will automatically be removed. I'll confirm the cut on purpose so we can see it more clearly. As you can see, this section has been cut. Hover over the last feature in the tree. Right-click and delete it to remove the cut. Double-click the sketch to reactivate it. Open the extruded cut command again. Under Feature Scope, Auto Select is active by default. Turn it off. After turning it off, the Solid Bodies to Effect option becomes available. Solid Bodies to Effect lets you choose exactly which body the cut will apply to. Select the body where you want to apply the cut. Switch back to the top view. Click OK. As you can see, the cut only applies to the selected body. Mirror this cut feature. Open the Mirror command. For the Mirror plane, select the top plane from the Feature Manager tree. In Features to Mirror, select the cut feature we just created. Click OK. Switch to Section View to see the part in cross-section. From the Evaluate tab, open the Measure tool and check if the 12mm dimension is correct. Open a new sketch on the top plane. Select the Straight Slot tool. Draw it aligned with the origin. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Set the distance between the centre of this arc and the centre of this circle to 30mm. Set the slot length to 150 millimeters. Set the slot radius to 6 millimeters. Switch back to section view to check the cross section again. Activate the extruded cut command. Set the end condition to blind. Switch to the front view. Drag the arrow upward so the cut direction is upward. Set the cut depth just enough to pass through the part. Now, we want the cut to start 2.5 millimeters above the surface. In from arrow start condition, select offset. Offset simply shifts the starting point of the cut by a given distance. Enter 2.5 millimeters as the offset value. As you can see, the cut now starts 2.5 millimeters above the surface. Click OK. Mirror this cut feature the same way as before. Open the Measure tool again and confirm that the remaining thickness is 5 mm. Exit Section View. Open the Fillet command. I'll apply a fillet here, but we'll run into an issue. Click on this edge. As you can see, 
the fillet looks incorrect. The reason is that we currently have two separate bodies. Fillet only works properly on a single body, so it doesn't flow smoothly across multiple bodies. Exit the fillet command. From the direct editing tab, open the combine command. Select the bodies you want to merge, then confirm. Now they've been combined into a single body. Open the fillet command again. Set the radius to 35 millimeters. Apply the fillet to the same edge again. Apply the fillet to this edge as well. Click OK. The model is now complete. Next, we'll move on to assigning material and appearances. Let's assign a material. Right click and choose Edit Material. Master rods like this are typically made from alloy steels such as AISI4130 or AISI4340 because of their high strength and toughness. Here, I'll assign AISI4340 as the material. As you can see, the part now takes on the material's default appearance. I'll change it a bit to make the visuals more appealing. Go to Edit Appearance. Click on the material's color. Click Define Custom Colors. Add this color to Custom Colors so we can save it as a custom option. Click OK. Go to the Appearances tab. Under Metals, open the Brass category. Apply the brushed brass appearance. Go back to Edit Appearance. Click on the dominant color. Assign the custom material color we saved earlier. Now we've blended the look of AISI 4340 steel with a brass finish for a more attractive result. Of course, you can choose any materials and appearances you like. And that's how we've completed our master rod model in SolidWorks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to SolidWorks Central for more step-by-step -step tutorials. For new video ideas or any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.